Well, hello there. You'll never guess what we're going to talk about today. Spoilers, it's going through my cream and liquid blush collection. So if you want to see swatches of all of these beautiful blushes and my thoughts about the brands and the formulas, then go ahead and just keep on watching and subscribe. All right, I was debating if I want to swatch things by formula, like so all of the Milani's together and so on and so forth, or by color. And I think I'm going to do by color and I'll talk about the formulas as we go through. So that way, if you're looking for a deep red blush, you can see the deep red blushes I have, compare them, see which one's the best for you. We're gonna do it that way. Hopefully you all like that. So speaking of deep reds, that's where we are going to start. This first shade is from Honest Beauty. It is the shade Plum Berry. I got this from TJ Maxx. That is a trend with a lot of my makeup. I love getting makeup at TJ Maxx. This one, very emollient when you touch it. Uh, you can see maybe it just starts to swirl right around. There's no real drag or anything like that. It's a very deep, almost brown toned red. I think that calling it Plum is an interesting choice because I, I mean, I get plum, but plum to me is a little bit more purple than what this turns out to be. Things that I can say about the formula. It is a little bit more matte leaning of a cream blush. It's not a matte cream blush, but as far as my cream blushes go on the cheeks, this one loses its do very quickly. Like I'm not sure if you can see, but there's really no sheen coming from that. It does have a pretty solid color. It's very pigmented, so a little bit goes a long way. So for me and my personal skin tone, I have to be careful, but if you have deeper skin, that may be a benefit for you. This has been around for a long time, this cream blush formula, and I feel like there's a reason that people think of it, you know, and think it's consistent. I will say, as more things have come on the market, I feel like this isn't the standout that it maybe once was. Up next, we're actually gonna go with this Profusion blush. This is from their like succulent collection that they did. Oh my gosh, can I get these open? That's the real question. This is the shade Full Bloom. Maybe it's Rose Petal, it's one of those two things. The Profusion blushes, I really like. For the price, I think they're like four or five dollars. I feel like it's very creamy. This one is more matte than the Honest Beauty one, but it also feels like a little bit more putty almost in its texture. You can see as I'm blending it out, it does go like full, full matte. There's not any sheen to it, but it lasts really well. And the texture of it reminds me of the e.l.f. blush palette a lot. And this is one step closer to the Tower 28. So it's not like the Tower 28 because it is more matte, but it is very smooth and I love this color. Actually gonna go ahead and hop over here to the e.l.f. Active Lip and Cheek and swatch this color really quickly. It's very, very similar to what we've swatched so far. Honestly, it kind of looks like it's an in-between between the first two. I do really enjoy this formula. I hate the pan size. These pan sizes are terrible for cream blush because the brush that I use for cream blush does not fit in here. So I feel like I don't use it as much purely for that but I do really like the colors and I like that this is a full face of cream, you know, color products. I also think that the e.l.f. formula is really solid. You can see maybe it does have a tiny bit more of a sheen, but it is a cream. Like it's not a glossy cream, it is just a straight up cream. And I think that the reason they chose to do that for this formula is that you're supposed to be able to use these on the lips. Too. Next up, we have the Salt New York shade. This is Spice. It looks like ice, but I promise it's Spice. Okay, don't hate me, you guys. I don't love the Salt New York blushes. I'm not sure if you can see, but it's getting a little bit of like, I don't know, that like condensation on the top that happens. I don't know. It happens with some formulas. The reason I don't like this formula is because it is hard. You got to really like warm it up 
to get any type of movement out of it. And once you do, it it does warm up, you know, but with a brush, like you have to like get your finger in there to warm it up before you go in with the brush. Um, it also is a lot less pigmented than the others that we've been swatching so far. I'm not sure if you can really see that, but it is less pigmented. And I just, the Salt New York blush formula is probably my least favorite out of the three formulas I've tried, the highlighter, the bronzer, and the blush. I really do want to try the foundation. I just haven't because I don't want to pay shipping for the one product, but uh, the blush just isn't it for me personally. I know it makes me basic to say, but the Tower 28 blush is my favorite formula. This is the shade Beach Please. I got it in a set a long time ago. I love this formula because it's the perfect combination of like emollient, but still manages to be pretty long lasting. Like when I put this blush on, I can tell that it is still on, you know, hours later when I go and check in the mirror. So this one is really pigmented. It's a really deep, like ruddy kind of red shade. I love it. Oh my gosh. I have to use a very light hand but it is like a great sunburnt kind of red shade for me. So, so pretty. And it does have more gloss to it than the other ones that we've done so far. And I find that it keeps that kind of, a little bit of like a life-giving gloss to it, but it's not like super tacky when you touch it later on in the day. I don't know. For me, I like it. Would I pay $20 for it? Absolutely not. No freaking way. I will tell you what I would pick instead here in a little bit, but I do, I am happy that I have the two that I have, and I know that I use them the most out of every blush I have by far. Even though it doesn't look like it because, you know, you only need a tiny little bit for it to, at least for me and my skin tone, for it to show up. So it'll last me until the day I die. And that's okay with me. I'm happy to have it. I'm actually going to jump over here and do this one really quickly. This is the Ilia like multi-stick in the shade Dreamer. I got this in a Sephora Clean Beauty set a long time ago. I love this color. Oh my gosh. This is like the Tower 28, but easier for me in my skin tone to wear. It's that same sunburnt type of look, but um, it's not quite as pigmented off the jump as the Tower 28. I will say though, I don't think that this one is quite as long lasting and it is a little bit glossier too. I'm only gonna do one shade of the Kaja Bento blush stack right now. This is the shade Sweet Sangria and I'm gonna do this darker one and then we'll come back and do the lighter one over here with those types of colors. We're getting much more into wine territory now and you know, Everyone that I've seen have these, didn't really love them. I I like these little Kaja blush ones. To me, it's a very standard cream blush formula. That's true with most of them so far. Like they, you know, a cream blush is a cream blush in, you know, most scenarios. And I feel that way about this. It's not revolutionary, but I do like that you get two and I feel like the shades are different enough. I'll go ahead, you know, I'll give you a little sneak peek. I'll show you what they both look like on my hand, just so that way you can see what the two shades are together that you get in this little, you know, combo. So they're very different, you know, and you can do some like blush ombre with this pretty easily, you know, one into the other and get like a really dimensional look. I enjoy that little blush bento thing. I mean, for... 20 bucks you get two colors versus tower 28 is one so another very wine colored shade is this one from fenty which i got in a kit say it with me now that's how i get most of my like makeup it feels like this is the shade summertime wine the fenty formula is fine i wouldn't seek it out that's how i feel about it it is a little bit more rigid you know, you have to warm it up a little bit more than some of these others like the Tower 28 or even the Profusion and the Elf one. Those ones come a little bit more loose to begin with. This one, you got to warm it up a tiny bit and it does like it, you know, 
you got to kind of work a little harder to get it to blend out. It does blend and it looks, you know, seamless once it is blended out. But to me, these are expensive. And for the price, considering what else is on the market, I would never pay full price for this. Just my honest opinion. I've made the executive decision. I am not a rose ink person. This is the shade Azalea. And I just have not had luck with the Rose Ink products that I've tried. I have not really enjoyed any of them. And that's honestly how I feel. You can see it is thick. Oh my God. It is very, very thick. It's pigmented. You know, it's just really middle of the line. It blends out, but it, for considering how like emollient it feels, it does kind of go a little patchy, I feel like personally. And I just, I don't know. I can't put my finger on it. Rose ink doesn't feel like the quality that they are charging for their products. And I don't know. I know some people do like rose ink. I just am not the person. It's, it's not for me. If I was going to declutter a blush, it would be this one. It's a little bit unique color-wise for me. You can see my other two wine colors lean a little bit more pink, whereas this goes a little bit more red. But honestly, out of all my blush formulas, this would be the first to go. This one from Moira is the shade I Love You. It's a red, and I was really excited about getting this because I don't have a red. One thing to note though, the packaging on these is garbage. I literally every single time I feel like have to get out my little depotting tool to pop open the lid to actually get it open. But I will say the formula itself is similar to Tower 28. I agree with what people say about that. It's a little less easy to move around on your like when you're blending it out. It's a little stiffer. But the amount of shine that you get is pretty similar. And I feel like this is long lasting. I did the cold girl makeup trend. I was doing like a Zoom hangout with some of my friends while I had COVID. I wore this and I was shocked because it stayed on all night and it looked so cute. The little cold girl, you know, like chapped kind of cheek look. I loved it. And I, I'm, a, I'm a fan. I would get more shades of this. And considering the price difference, I think that this is the way to go for an affordable cream blush. That's This is my favorite cheap formula, especially since I think e.l.f. most of their cream blushes are gone at this point. These are all of my red leaning blushes. And at this point, I'll go ahead, pause, and go through each of the colors one last time. So that way you can see just for reference. So first up, we have Honest Beauty in Plum Berry. Then we have Profusion in what I think is Rose Petal. Next, we have the shade from the e.l.f. palette, which doesn't have a name. Next is from Salt New York. This is the shade Spice. After that, we have Tower 28 in Beach Please. Next, er, Power Hour. Sorry, that's Power Hour. Next is the Ilya Multi Stick in Dreamer. After that is the shade from the Kaja Bento box, the Sweet Sangria. Then we've got Summertime Wine from Fenty. Then we've got Azalea from uh, Rose Ink. And then lastly, we have I Love You from Moira. Go ahead and do some of these brighter peach and coral shades on my arm, and then we'll switch to the other side. This is the shade from Milani. This is Coral Crush. This is one of the original ones that they came out with. I like it because it's such a punchy color. It's different than anything I have. You can see it does start to thin out once you apply it. It's not quite as thick and juicy of a swatch as some of these initial ones are. It also feels kind of more like a stain, but for feeling like a stain, it doesn't it doesn't last as long as I would expect it to. I also feel like it looks really glossy in the actual pan and you can see it's like very smooth and almost oily feeling, but it doesn't really keep that gloss once you swatch it out. It, it leaves pretty quickly. I, I think it's cool that the drugstore has a blush formula and when it came out, I was super excited about it, but it's not my favorite out of like the cheaper blush formulas. I would pick Moira for sure over that. Profusion maybe, and then the old elf ones, yeah, 
for sure. Next, we've got a ColourPop, ColourPop blush stick in the shade More is More. And I really like this one. I think that the blush sticks are just fine, you know? They're not anything to write home about. But the reason I like this one so much in particular is because it reminds me a lot of the Milk Makeup blush stick in Perk. It's got that like kind of golden pearl in it that kind of is orgasm-esque and it does add a really pretty sheen to the cheeks. These aren't the most long lasting, but it's definitely longer lasting than the Milk blush stick, which is why I actually decluttered that and kept this one. This one from Milani is one of their like fruit collection blushes. This is Yora Peach. It's a very orange leaning peach color and it's a fun one. Again, formula is the same as the other Milani one I swatched right here. Not quite as dewy as I expect, not quite as long lasting as I expect, but a really fun color. We have another Fenty one. This is the shade Peach Face. This was like from a little set that they did last Christmas. This is an orange a little bit even more so orange than that one from Milani. But do you see how it's kind of fading away into nothing? I find that that is true no matter what. Even if I layer this up, it does kind of keep that really subtle kind of peach shade to it. There is a little bit of golden sparkle in this one too. Out of the two, I would honestly say the Milani is the better option, especially if you factor in price. We're quickly running out of room on this arm, but we are only going to swatch two more. This one is Picnic Time. This is from that Limoncello collection. I thought this was supposed to be a pearly finish, but it's definitely not. That is like straight up matte. It's a little bit more pink than orange between like these two and this one. I don't even know if that's available anymore though, honestly. So, you know, um, I again, the blush stick formula is fine. It's not anything to write home about. This one in particular is just really special to me. Last but not least, this is the Profusion blush from the Boba collection. This is the shade Best Tea. I will say this formula is a little bit stiffer than the other Profusion blush that I have. It does get creamy, but it starts off a little bit stiffer. Also, the packaging on this is garbage. This like little plastic piece pops out constantly and I have to put it back in. So don't love that. But the shade itself is really, really fun. And honestly, it's, again, that orangey kind of peach shade. Out of these three, this is my favorite. Regardless of the packaging being absolutely atrocious. The formula itself, I really do like that Profusion blush formula. It's very creamy and, um, again, pretty long-lasting, too. We'll go ahead and run through these coral shades one more time. So first, from Milani, we have Coral Crush. From ColourPop, More is More. From Milani, You're a Peach. From Fenty, Peach Face. From ColourPop, what is this one called? Picnic Time. And then lastly, from Profusion, Best Tea. Like a tea you drink. Haha, <laughs> get it? I'm really not looking forward to how absolutely stained to filth my arms are going to be after this. But it's all for science. So now we're going to move into what are like the more like natural blush shades, at least for my skin tone. This first one is the shade Peach Sunset from like the Tarte Rainforest of the Sea or whatever collection. It's a really pretty peachy shade, very, very creamy and the most matte, like truly matte out of everything that I have. I, I like this one for day to day. It lasts pretty well and it's very, very blendable and a nice color. Next, I was thinking I'm just going to do this full blush palette from e.l.f. If you've been here for a long time, first of all, shout out to you. And second of all, you will know I freaking love this blush palette. For $8, you can get all four of these shades and they're all different enough. You know what I mean? Like you can do something different with all four. It's a great formula. It's pretty long lasting, really creamy and smooth. Even though I've had it for so long, it is still easy to blend. And I just, oh, why? Why are they getting rid of this? I feel like I can't find it anywhere anymore and that makes me so sad. But if you do have it, this is your sign. Pull it out. Love on these blushes. They're so good. Go ahead and swatch this other e.l.f. blush really quickly too. 
for more of that like neutral kind of peachy shade. Again, love the formula, hate the packaging on that. Now on the opposite end of the spectrum, beautiful packaging. I don't mind the fingerprints. I know some people really don't like the fingerprint action that this type of packaging can get, but I don't mind it. This is insanely expensive. It's the Natasha Denona face palette. I really enjoy the eyeshadows in this palette. I love the highlighter in this palette. The blush, garbage, 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 garbage. Look at that. What is that? It is like a powdery kind of cream formula. It doesn't blend well. It doesn't layer well, and it doesn't apply well to begin with. So total dud. If you're getting this palette for the blush, no, the blush is by far the worst part of the palette. Go ahead and do my other Tower 28 blush now. This is the shade Magic Hour. I use this a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. It's beautiful. It is like my perfect, is she wearing blush? I can't tell type of blush color. And it's just so beautiful, so pigmented, got the perfect amount of sheen to it, lasts well not worth $20 to me personally. Next up, we'll go ahead and do, oh, I think that's gonna be too pink. Let's do this one first. This might be a mistake, but that's okay. We're gonna do the Stila Convertible Color. This is the shade Magnolia. This is a more browny kind of shade and it's much more cool, but I really enjoy it. Oh, that might not have been the best one to put there. I, I might've been wrong or right in saying that that was a mistake. But I really like this color. There's something very 90s about it to me. And even though it's cool, I can wear it with warmer eyeshadows and it still looks okay. So it's a really fun one. And the formula on this is really nice too. I actually think these two formulas are very similar. I got this one from TJ Maxx to the surprise of no one. And for the $6 I paid for it, great cream blush. Again, would I pay full price? Absolutely not, but I'm glad that I have it at $6. We're gonna jump over here. I think that this is gonna be a little bit closer to what we were swatching. This is from Milani. This is the shade Nude Kiss. Here it is. It's a little bit more bright and punchy than some of these other peach shades that we've been doing up here, but it's a good one. I've already talked about the formula, so we'll move on. In here is another Salt New York shade. This is the shade Rose. And again, I stand by that the Salt New York formula just unfortunately is not my favorite. I am not a big fan. These are a little bit older, so keep that in mind. And I know that they discontinued a bunch of shades. I'm not sure if they reformulated or something, but the sh version that I have, I don't love. This is the Putty Luminous Blush in the shade Maui. And I actually really enjoy this formula. I did not like the original Putty Blush, but this one to me is more creamy and less of that like powdery feel. And I find that the luminosity that this has is very flattering. It's kind of got a gold pearl in it, way more subtle than something like More is More over here but a really pretty shade and I, I enjoy it. I, I really want to try the new Luminous Bronzer formula, so stay tuned. Maybe I'll pick that up at some point. Now we'll do the top shade in that Kaja Bento box thing. It's a very like cool toned rosy pink. Very, very pretty, really enjoy that one. And it's very different than pretty much anything else I have, which for me, is hard to come by at this point. Last but certainly not least is another Moira. Let me grab my depotting tool because again, very crappy packaging. This is the shade I Miss You and it's a bubblegum pink. It is more intimidating than it can be applied to the face. So it kind of is giving me like, oh, the Persona bubble shade I think it is that everyone was like, loving and talking about earlier this year. This is my, I don't wanna pay $20 for that version of that blush. And you can see it's a very soft pink when you blend it out. It doesn't have to be this like bam on your face. And I think it's really flattering. It actually probably is the most natural blush color for me and like my redness that is naturally in my face. Let's run through all of these one more time. So this is Tarte Peach Sunset. 
These next four are from the e.l.f. cream quad. Then we've got another one from the e.l.f. active lip and cheek. We have the garbage Natasha Denona blush. We have Tower 28 Magic Hour, the Stila Convertible Color Magnolia, the Milani Nude Kiss, the Salt New York Rose, Elf Luminous Putty Blush in Maui, the Second Shade of the Sweet Sangria from Kaja, and then Moira, I Miss You. And here are all of my cream blushes all together. I will say, I was going through a really hardcore cream blush phase of like wanting to acquire cream blushes. I still wear it every time I do my makeup. I like never reach for powder blushes, but I definitely don't feel the need to get any more. I have every color I could ever want and then some, honestly, because I've got a ton of repeat shades and I'm really happy with what I have. Some of them I love more than others, but I definitely am not planning on decluttering any at this point in time because they all fit in my little container for them and I'm happy to have them. I just don't plan on adding any at all. <laughs> Maybe ever, honestly. Out of all of the cream blushes that I've shown you, I would say formulas that stick out the most to me. If you can find this e.l.f. blush quad, I still say that this is a great, great product for $8 especially, can't go wrong. But I also really do enjoy the Luminous Putty Blush for a cheap alternative. I would say the Moira ones are pretty dang nice. I would say they're my favorite alternative to the Tower 28. And it's not just because the packaging is the exact same. I also do really enjoy the Pro Fusion for a little bit more of a matte look. If that's something that you're into, just know packaging, not so great. Getting into a little bit more expensive, I do end up using this Kaja one a lot just because the shades are nice to have too and it's pretty unique, pretty compact, easy to travel with and have options. I, I love the Tower 28, would not pay full price, but I do enjoy the blushes. The Tarte one I like a lot for day to day. That matte look is pretty long lasting and it's very flattering and kind of smoothing, honestly. And then I really do like the Stila convertible color. I'm not sure if it's just because the shade I have is like so unique compared to everything else, but I do enjoy it. I don't have nearly as many liquid blushes as I do cream blushes. It, I definitely prefer a cream in a pot or a stick over a liquid, but I do have a few and I figured I'd swatch them out and show them to you. I'm just gonna do it on the back of my hand since I'm kind of running out of room on my arms. I am missing one, it is at work. It's the shade Bliss from Rare Beauty, the really light pink. I have it at work because even though these are super pigmented, that one, because it's so light, doesn't get overwhelming on me. And I can throw it on at work if I need a little something. And I like to have some options at work. So that one's not here, but everything else is. We'll start with the Danessa Myricks Color Fix in Latte. These are pigmented. Oh my god. You have to be careful. You have to be so careful with these because... It can get bad very quickly. They also dry down matte and they really truly do dry down. You will not get this thing to move. Look at that. Do you see that? That is so, so, so pigmented. But once it's dried down, it's not going anywhere. So be careful if you get these. It is a pretty color though. Um, and it can be used anywhere. But I honestly, I feel like I'm scared of it. Really, truly, I don't use it a ton because I am afraid. <laughs> Go ahead and do this Ilia product next. This is the shade Before Today in their like multi-use pigment line. This has a very strong kind of vanilla smell. And honestly, I feel like I think of this more as a lip product than I do a blush, partly because of the smell. It's fine, you know, I... I use it more as a lip product, so I feel like I honestly can't speak to it as a blush quite as much, but it is technically able to be used as a blush. I actually really enjoy this from Junk Elephant. This is the like rosy drop blush, and I also have the bronzer. I got a little set that they had, and it's very pearly. Oops, oh my gosh. Color-wise, this is really similar to the Bliss shade in Rare Beauty, 
but that is a matte shade in Rare Beauty's line, and this is much more luminous. There's almost a little bit of like a pink pearl to it. Even when it's not that thickly swatched out, you can still see the pearl that it leaves behind, and it looks just very natural and healthy. Go ahead and move into the Glossier Paint Pot I have, this or Cloud Paint, sorry. This is the shade Dusk, and I really like this shade. It is very unique for anything else that I have. It is like a dusty orange, kind of burnt brown shade. I don't know how else to describe it, but it is a very unique shade, and I find that the cloud paints do last pretty well. I just don't reach for it as much as I should because it is a liquid. Here, we'll go ahead and go into the NYX Sweet Cheeks. This is the shade Nuditude. I got this as a direct influence from Kelly Gooch because she really likes this. I think it's fine. You know, it's a matte blush, cream blush. Um, the color is pretty. I do like that it's the doe foot, not just like a squeezy tube, but I mean, it's fine. It's, I, I don't think it's as revolutionary as she does. This is the viral shade Joy from Rare Beauty. And yes, it is as pigmented as everyone says. We'll do a little drop and then I'll spread it out so you can see how pigmented it is. It's basically on the same level, maybe a little less than the Danessa Myricks. That is insane. The Danessa Myricks is really, really pigmented. The Rare Beauty is as well. I do like this kind of burnt red shade and I like the kind of luminosity that this has. It's got almost a little tiny bit of a gold pearl in it if you squint hard, but I find that it does dry down a little bit more matte. And I will say between this last one and this one, I would pick this over the Rare Beauty. This is the Freck Cheek Slime. This is the shade Fever Dream. I think that this is beautiful. It's a little bit even more punchy than the Rare Beauty color, but you can see maybe it's starting to smooth out and it, it thins out beautifully and it really does kind of leave a stain behind. I also find this is a multi-use product and I love how it looks on the lips. I will wear this on my cheeks and my lips together as a monochromatic look and I love how it looks every single time. I'm really, really happy with this product. And out of all my liquid blushes, that's by far my favorite formula. It is the most matte. And I think that that is because, not the most matte, this is obviously very matte, so is this. But it is pretty matte, and I feel like part of that is what gives it that stain effect to the face. But I like it. I really like it. I, I don't know. Maybe it's all in my head. But I do really like this. And this is an insane amount of blush. I will never go through this in my entire life. We'll do a quick like full arm and hand swatch. So that way you can see everything I've got in my collection. This is an update for my cream blushes. And hopefully this update is going to last for forever. I do not need any more cream or liquid blushes. And I'm really happy with what I've got. And yeah, let me know. Have you tried any of these? formulas. Do you like them? Do you not like them? Do you agree with what I said about them? Do you disagree? Whatever you got to say, let me know down below. I love hearing from you. And until I see you next time, I hope that you stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy. Bye!